income, we go from primitive income to income rebuilding to megalithic. transition back to ink again. So polygonal shapes. Here you go from classic Inca. Yeah. And then here the Inca found a damaged superior wall that had been broken. So they simply took the stone and packed it back in. And then the original is here. Ones are more, you know, at an angle, the edges are. Yeah. And the other giveaway is again, you, you notice that all the stone is, is of an equal, like it all came from the same quarries, from a three line to four a green granite quarry. When you look up here, then you have smaller basalt blocks. So this is probably an example of the Inca trying to aesthetically make the wall look as good as that. But they couldn't do it. And they weren't able to go to the quarry, which is up on top of the mountain there, and cut blocks, big, you know, big blocks like this up. So they simply scavenged from another building and then filled it in. And here again, you see the upper stuff is different. You go from granite to basalt. You go from large to small. And also the way that the you see the way the wall is, is way off how it bulges. Right there. That's probably again a massive earthquake that came through all of this material down and then shifted it. But it fits together so well. The wall didn't fall down, but it had to re-establish itself. architecture which is well tied each other no? it's interlocked no? giant very well giant that tells the differences big big rocks boulders and the type of material is green granite but the stone over there those are limestone limestone green granite and we are gonna see darker granite later and at Machu Picchu white granite different materials so these Incas, they make sure to use solid and harder type of rocks because the construction should last almost forever, but at least for many generations. Maybe it's my vanish. 
So here again, if you look at the at the workmanship, you can see the front looks really good, but then it splays as it goes out. Yeah. So that's the Inca trying to make this to look copy. like that. And if the wall hadn't been destroyed, you couldn't tell. It's like, oh, that's the same as well. <laughs> but also these are the Inca tool marks. That's like a hammer doing the finishing work after 500 years, whereas that doesn't, those don't have tool marks. So we have a group of dowsers here, like people who are really good at it. Every time they cross one of these lines, the rods moved in. And then every time they walk past it, the rods move back out. Huh. So they also measure that this is the center of the energy. So the energy is still working. It's, it's actually pulsing in and out of the center because Cusco is the center of the Inca world. The Cori Cancha is the center of Cusco, and this is the center of the Cori Cancha. So it's an energetic thing that the Inca actually understood because they divided the sectors of their world up into along these lines called seques, which we'll see a, there's a, a drawing of what that was. So I think they were able to sense 
that this this was energetic in some like spiritually energetic or something. Yeah, yeah. But I think in original original times it was uh, you know some kind of facility. Yeah, like a practical facility. So you follow this line and it goes around the corner and then around the corner and then around the corner all the way to there. So that's a three dimensional piece locking into the rest of it. Center is Cusco. The center of Cusco is the Coricancha. The center of the Coricancha is where that tub was that we saw. So compared to most cultures that um, that will have borders between one country and another country based on a river or mountain ranges, this is based on energy lines. So that's why the Inca world is called the Tawa to the Suyans, which means the four quarters of the world. The main world was divided into these four quarters, and these Seke lines radiate out from them. So it's just something that's kind of different. In each um, black spot, is like they have one um, waka, like ancient stones or sacred stones. That's the way they will they will know how to get to this. So in 500 years, with no evolution of tool technology, you do not go from this to that. It just it tells you. Yeah, it's interesting is that we've been talking about those knobs all day. Yeah. And they're up there, a few here and up there, but the rest of it they're without. Yeah. And again, it's pretty obvious here that you have the original wall here, and then part of it fell down, probably during the cataclysm. So the Inca took the stone, put it into place, used clay as mortar to put it together, ran out of material, and then got the local limestone or andesite and built on top. And then you have Spanish on top of that. 